So essentially the first deployment strategy is the recreate deployment strategy. So essentially it's the recreate strategy involves shutting down the old version of the application and then starting a new version. This approach is straightforward and easy to understand. So essentially we've got an, a version of our application that's live on the web and we're going to do a new deployment. The new deployment will have all our new implementations in the new features and so on. And what we will do is we'll shut the older version down, which is the one that's live. And then we're going to add in our new version with all our updates and so on. So that's essentially what that is. Pros for this are that it's simple, is easy to implement and understand because they are two separate entities. The is resource efficient as well. So there's no need to run multiple versions simultaneously conserving resources. So that's two of the pros there, but there are probably more than that. And some cons. So this is when you think about making sure your site is highly available. We want to make sure it's elastic and also scalable. And these are some terms that are used in cloud and DevOps that essentially we want to think about the outcome for the customer and the impact on whatever application it is. So it's specific to whatever industry you're working with or website you're working with. So bear that in mind. So cons are there's downtime. So there's downtime while the new version is being deployed. That is quite obvious with this strategy and it's also risky because if the new version fails then the entire application is down and then that could then lead to further downtime which then would impact your client base or your user so you need to also bear that in mind and and them cons alone are enough to make you think actually maybe we should do another deployment strategy so again if there is downtime and you want to go with this approach then maybe you need to do it at a certain time that most of your clients or users are not using the site so you could look at your analytics and maybe check when the traffic is very low or little and then therefore you could do your deployment strategy that way again most of the time in companies that i worked for previously if this was a strategy that they implemented then it was generally done late or to early hours of the morning and again that's just so we don't have as much downtime as possible so so this is the recreate deployment strategy what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this implementation, but you can implement it yourself, but we will do that later and I'll give you a detailed explanation of how to implement your deployment strategy. The second strategy for deployment is rolling updates. So this essentially is rolling updates incrementally replace instances of old version with instances of the new version. This ensures that the application remains available during the deployment. So just making small rolling changes whilst the application is available so small sections that are updating whilst the others are so that's quite a good approach if you want no downtime and you can see here the pros it's got zero downtime ensures that the application is always available and also it's a gradual update so you can also monitor whilst the update is happening and you can also roll back when there are issues detected so so this is good if you've got like real-time logging that you can you track and see what's going on if there's anything affected with your site and so on this is quite a good approach so and then if there is something wrong then you can always roll back as well so that's uh, another pro and then the con for this is it's complex because there's a bit more work that needs to be done for this again we'll look at that later and also it's an inconsistent state so users may experience inconsistent behavior if interacting with different versions during the update so so that is something else to bear in mind so also you will need to bear that in mind especially if the users using the local browser state or if there's something in local storage or uh, something that is saved or stored then also you need to bear in mind that the new fix if that is implemented we need to ensure that any caches or anything like that are also cleared so that is another con so essentially the user will have an inconsistent state and again there are pros and also cons to this strategy and now what we want to do is basically create a new file in our code so in here what i'm going to do is create a file so this is going to be called deployment.yaml and this is the yaml file that basically will deploy our code to kubernetes so let me just bring in our yaml file so let me just copy this and paste it in here like so and let me save that and also delete everything in our terminal so now this is our yaml file let's just hover over the errors so it's saying here missing property selector so all we can do is just do quick fix and use copilot just to fix this so if we scroll down it basically adds the selector so let's accept that 
and then this one again we could fix it with copilot just so we not focusing on this too much and focusing more on the deployment side of things so again now we can see we've got our yaml file in here this file is for deployment and then metadata is imran's v app deployment the spec and the selectors information is in here then we have the container name which is imran's v app container and then we also have the image which is imran's v app image of the latest so let me just save everything in here now this is where kubectl comes in and this is where we need to deploy or apply for the deployment so let me just paste in the command here which is kubectl apply dash f deployment dot yaml so let's now press enter on that and now it says here deployments are created over here and there's one more command we need to do this is to basically do the recreate deployment so let me just copy this and paste it in so it's kubectl rollout restart deployment slash example deployment or in our case what we should do is deployment slash and then the deployment name so in our case what do we call this imran's v app deployment so let me just add that in here like that and press enter so now it says deployments app restarted so now that's deployed let's go into our dashboard and let's go into our cluster and then if we go onto the kubernetes resources over here you can see this list over here and in workload let's click on that and then you can see here this is what we have this is the imran's v app deployment so you can see it's clicked through here so now you can see here in this deployment strategy the strategy is the rolling update strategy so that's what we are doing which was basically rollout restart and then the deployment itself so that is how you would do it so now what you can do is you, you got the overview here let's click refresh and it's still pending so if we go into events you can see the events of what's happening over here you can see the yaml file over here of what's going on so essentially that is how you would recreate a deployment as you can see here now the deployment has restarted in our case we're doing the rollout deployment so that's how you would do that so if i go into the cluster so that's where our deployments are managed in the kubernetes resource in here in workloads you should see this name which is imran's v app deployment so you can see here imran's v app deployments if you click through you have the overview of the deployment over here so it says rolling update strategy 25 percent max and then 25 percent max surge so basically this is a rolling update all of this information is here it's pending i'm not going to actually deploy but essentially this is how it will work and then that essentially is how you would recreate your deployment so again it says here in the implementation kubectl rollout restart deployment and then the deployment name so that's how you would do that essentially it's the same for the rolling update strategy but basically you could amend your yaml file where you would kind of give the strategy type as a rolling update so it's kind of the same strategy where you would implement and then just change the yaml file to update that so we've covered two there which is the rolling deployment or the rolling update deployment strategy and also recreate deployment strategy so this is essentially recreating the last deployment so that's how you would do that